Hi Wimbo, could you please help me with this model? I'm trying to create this pattern in Blender. I tried everything including Boolean, but it's still not working properly. It's just a flat surface, please help. And when I see this message, I thought, well, that is easy. And apparently it was not that easy as I thought it would be. This is my challenge. I've been studying this for a couple of days and uh, I even asked my wife to help me with this math equations to kind of getting this problem solved because she used to be a math teacher back in the US so anyway so this is the uh, tutorials how to creating this shape alright let's get started now let's get started shift A to adding a ring or adding a circle and now we're gonna change some modification on the vertices after the careful calculation from my wife and also my testing and to start with in a circle with number 12 that works the best and of course for this tutorial if you have a better solution for this geometry please let us know i really really want to know how you do it in a better and easier way okay and then we're going to go to the edit mode hitting tab hit s to shrink it down a little bit and hit E S to having a ring. Uh, the reason why I need to build this ring shape is because we want having all these geometry pre-built before we apply subsurface modifier later on. Then I'm going to tap it out to go to the object mode and then right click and then control A to apply the scale and then I'm going to go to the edit mode again and uh, select everything hit A and then I'm gonna start building this, all right? And Shift D to duplicate it, and G and Z to kind of grab this thing up. Uh, you can control the space for each row, certainly. Okay, so the next, I'm going to select the top ring, and I'm going to do some rotation. However, if I hit R to rotate it, it's only rotating along this geometry right here. So I wanted to change the pivot point from the bounding box center to the 3D cursor. If I do so, hit R again, it's going to rotate around this circle. So this is what we want. So after we change the pivot point, I'm going to select this top part and the shift D. And this is a little bit tricky. So do not release or click anything for the mouth. And they're going to hit R immediately. And then we're going to rotate this and holding control key to having a 60 degree rotation. You can see the number on the uh, top left corner and then click that then we can do shift r to repeating this process instead of using the array modifier okay shift r to do this and we can just having this quickly build all right so this is the first uh, ring of circle is going to be six and the next ring of circle is going to be 12. so in the next i'm going to select this ring again repeating the same process and g z to grab it move up top and then gonna do shift D R immediately and rotate it holding control key so this time because we have 12 rings so the degree is going to be 30 degrees so I'm going to do this 30 degree click and shift R to re repeating this process okay cool so again shift D G Z G Z to grab it and the shift D R and this time it's going to be 20 rings so we're going to have 18 degrees so you can even just uh, type it out 1 8 and then click shift R to repeat it is I know this might seem a little bit time consuming but I have tested a different method I feel it feels like this is the best way I can possibly do. Of course, if you have better solutions, please let me know. Shift D, Z to move up, and Shift D, R, and this time it's going to be 15 degree. Control, okay. Shift D, Z, Shift D, R, and this time it's going to be 11.25 degrees, 
and shift R to repeat it. Okay, cool. And then shift D and Z to grab it. The last ring is going to be 36, so we're going to have a 10 degrees differences. All right, shift D, R, and type 10 and hit enter. And then we're going to shift R to repeat it. So now we are good for the, the ring size, everything. So that is okay. I want creating these ranks with some space. I didn't follow any reference image because I have a full control over this if I build a vertex group. Okay, so let's go here and uh, vertex, uh, let's go to the vertex group and then just starting with this. So I'm going to hitting the C key and just kind of doing this to select a really easy to do. Uh, and the B key. And then deselect these holding the middle mouse button. So this one is going to be the first vertex group. Okay, so I'm going to hit this and I'm just going to change this as number one. I mean, uh, and then I'm going to assign and select and deselect. So testing this works. Okay, so next I'm going to keep repeating this process to just getting the these vertices separated by simple rows of circles. So this is what I'm going to do. The reason I put it in the dash and with the number, I'm just trying to indicate in how many circles that we have in that particular row. Okay, so just the 6, 12, and uh, 20. So I'm going to assign this. Okay, keep going. So the last row, 6 with 36 circle. Enter, assign, select, and deselect. So next thing will be like this. So once we have all this, so I'm going to tap it out and shift D to duplicate it uh, and hit M to creating a backup. Okay, then I'm just going to continue working with this. Okay, then go to the edit mode. So now you can see the power of using this. So if I'm selecting the, for example, in the number five rows, so select, and then if I hit S key, so I can just basically changing the each vertices uh, space. But I noticed on the, this high corner, so there was one vertices being left out. So I'm going to edit, select, assign. So now it's working. Just some a better adjustment. And then for the four, select. Okay, cool. So I feel like the last one, I'm actually going to select everything here just to getting this as a, a center. So I'm going to do um, one more. So I'm just going to do zero dash one and then assign. Okay, cool. Now this would be the time to duplicate it one more time. Hit M to go to the backup. Okay. So then I'm going, uh, then I can actually be a little bit smarter this time. Hit the tab key, go to the edit mode. I'm going to select the most of these vertices, going to delete them. Then I can be using a mirror modifier. Hit X, X, and hit X to delete the vertices. And then same here. So making sure I was doing right. Okay. Hit X, the vertices. So now I can only just working on this part to getting like a quarter of workload finish. So if you want to visually to see the how it works, so we're going to go to this wrench icon 
adding a modifier and then we're gonna do mirror modifier and then also tap the Y so this is what's going to look like okay hmm feels like there's something wrong with this but I'm just going to manually grab it here because probably when we're moving this it's being moved around because this is the outer side of the uh, geometries of the ring it's not going to affect on the shape of this hole so it's not a big problem so I'm just going to move it here okay so that is all good so I'm going to temporarily disable the mirror modifier to start working with the geometry now I can see we have a uh, vertices left so we don't need that shift delete okay cool so now for the rest of these I'm just going to fill in with ungongs or some quads this one I'm actually using uh, spend a lot of time to do this so you don't actually need to do so many rolls like this uh, but for the purpose of this video I just gonna show you the process okay I'm going to put this process in the time lap if you already know how to do this you can just skip over this part of this video Now, now we're basically finished all the bridge space we have so if we turn on the modifier right here you can see here we have a round circle so what I would do here again shift the D to duplicate it hit M to back up and then what I would do here I'm going to finishing the top round corner for this edges so we, we need to have some geometry here then I'm going to apply the mirror modifier uh, we'll just do the clipping and to double check to select all the edges right here so I'm gonna hit the GX gonna move around so everything snap okay uh, one more time here bottom part all the geometry G Z just move around okay all the things snap so and then going to apply once the modifier has been applied all the geometry has been built all right here uh, next I'm going to fix the geometry on the very outside layer so I'm going to edit tab mode and number one vertice group so I'm just going to select this uh, entire ring click that hold click one more time because I'm using the machine tools that's why it's easy but you can spend some time to select that ring so I hit E X just to extrude it out then right click go to loop tool if you don't have this add-on this is actually come with blender you, you can just go to edit premises and search loop tool 
you can have that and make sure you enable that so you will have that and then go back to here and right click loop tool go to circle so making everything circle and then what I can do here I can just hit R to rotate it just a tiny bit so I can holding the shift key to do a small increment but this seems like all right to me about that so click that and then before I adding a subservice modifier I usually save this file so uh, control S and do that and then I'm gonna apply subservice modifier control 2 I'm just adding a two subdivisions over here. So now you can see we have the perfect shape that I want for this. You can certainly adding some thickness using a solidify modifier right here. We can just having that. And then if I'm going to the site view, I can actually see how thing works. Okay. So right now everything looks just fine and uh, Usually for this type of a pattern or this look this is just for a tiny details for your model and uh, you don't need to spend a whole lot of time just building like this. So if I were you, I'm going to save this 3D model just like this as a, an asset. Later on, when I need to have this type of a pattern or shapes in my 3D model, I can just simply pull this thing out. I save an hour of modeling to do this. So if you are one of my Patreon, you're certainly going to have this working file and then you can just save a lot of time and later on when you modeling your products, okay? All right, this is everything I wanna share in this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.